In this video, we are going to talk about algebra of complex numbers, which means we'll cover addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Specifically, we'll talk about the properties governing addition and multiplication. So let's get started. Let's start with addition. A quick recap of how we add complex numbers. If we have two of them, let's say we have two plus three i and four plus six i, how do we add them? What's their addition? So their sum is two plus four, that's their real parts. So it's six and then three plus six, that's nine. So it's six plus nine i. We add their real parts separately and then we add their imaginary parts separately. So two plus four, six and three plus six, nine. This is how we add. Now let's talk about some properties. The first one says that the sum of two complex numbers is always a complex number. You can go ahead and try, pick any two complex numbers and add them. You will always end up with another complex number. There are a few more. Let's cover them. This one says we can add them in any order. It doesn't matter which we pick first. So if we start with four plus six I and then add two plus three I to it, we'll still get the same answer. So the order does not matter. You can pick this one first or you can pick this one first. The next one is similar. If more than two are being added, we can group any two first. So if there were three complex numbers and we were adding all three of them, we could have picked any two first, added them and then added the third one. The answer would not change. Then there are two specific ones. This one says there exists a complex number that when added does nothing. So there's a complex number that's doing nothing when added to another complex number. And there's no surprise that that complex number is zero plus zero i. Try adding this to any complex number. You'll get the same complex number. Nothing changes. There's one more. It says every complex number has its additive inverse that when added to it gives zero. So think of it as its opposite, but in the addition world. So what's the additive inverse for two plus three i? What do we add two plus three i to, to get zero? If you want to get zero, you want to get rid of two and three i. So how do we get rid of two? We add minus two to it. And how do we get rid of three i? We add minus three i to it. So the additive inverse of two plus three i is minus two minus three i. It's basically the negative of that complex number. Now, if you look at these rules in your textbook, you'll see them written in some formal language and there are some names, some laws that we call them. So let's look at them as well. The first one is closure law. This one is commutative. This one is associative. These two are laws of existence. This one is existence of additive identity. And this one is existence of additive inverse. These two say that these two things exist for every complex number. It's additive identity exists. That's the same for everyone. That's zero plus zero I. And for every complex number there exists an additive inverse of it as well. That's its negative. So these are five laws for addition of complex numbers. What about subtraction? A quick recap. How do we subtract complex numbers? If there are two complex numbers, let's pick the same ones, two plus three I and four plus six I, how do we subtract one from the other? So subtracting the real parts will give us minus two, two minus four is minus two and subtracting the imaginary parts will give us three minus six, that's minus six i. So this will be minus two minus three i. All right, that's how we subtract. Now pause the video, think about these laws. Which of them work for subtraction, which of them don't? Okay, so let's think about it together. Closure law definitely works for subtraction. If sum of two complex numbers is always a complex number, the difference of two complex numbers will also be a complex number. So. This one works for subtraction. What about commutative? Does the order matter in subtraction? Well, yes, the order matters. If we subtract this from this, we'll get a different complex number. So commutative law does not work. Same is for associative law. If you're grouping and the order matters, this does not work. So associative law also does not work. Now, not a lot of people talk about subtractive identity or subtractive inverse. You don't find these terms in textbooks, but if we were to break some laws and make our new ones, we would say that these two also work for subtraction because think about it. Subtractive identity is something that you subtract from a complex number and nothing happens. 
that's also 0 plus 0 y. If you're adding it and nothing's happening, you can also say that if you subtract it, nothing happens. So my take is subtractive identity also works. What about subtractive inverse? Well, if there is a complex number that you add to get zero, there can also be a complex number that you can subtract to get zero. For example, this one, two plus three i. This complex number is itself its subtractive identity. It's a fancy way of saying that if you subtract the same thing, you'll get zero. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We're just playing with these laws. For addition, these five work. For subtraction, at least the first one works. The closure law works for subtraction. Let's move on. Let's talk about multiplication. How do we multiply complex numbers? Let's quickly recap. We have two plus three i and four plus six i, the same two complex numbers. How do we multiply them? Well, the way to do this is you multiply two times four, you get eight. And then you multiply two times six i, you get 12 i. And then you multiply three i with these two and add all four of them. So let's break this down. We have two times four, that's eight. Two times six i, that's 12 i. 3i times 4, that's also 12i. And 3i times 6i, you have to be careful here, that's 3 times 6, 18i square. Because we have two i's, so it's i square. And i square is minus 1, so we'll put a minus sign here. So we get 8 minus 18, that's minus 10. And then 12 plus 12, that's 24i. So we get minus 10 plus 24i. This is how we multiply two complex numbers. Now let's talk about its properties. The first one is, product of two complex numbers is always a complex number. Just like in addition, if you multiply two complex numbers, we'll always get a complex number. And the name is same, it's called the closure law. Moving on, we can multiply them in any order. It doesn't matter which we pick first. So if you pick four plus six i first and then multiply it with two plus three i, we would still get the same answer, minus 10 plus 24 i. You can try it yourself. In multiplication as well, the order does not matter. The third one is also very similar. If more than two are being multiplied, we can group any two first. So if there were three complex numbers, we could have picked any two first, multiplied them, and then multiplied this product with the third one. The order does not matter. This one is called the associative law. Then we have two laws for existence, just like we have for addition. Let's look at them. There exists a complex number that when multiplied does nothing. That's one plus zero i. This is basically one. So we're saying that if you multiply anything by one, nothing happens, nothing changes. This one is called the existence of multiplicative identity. And finally, we have this one. Every complex number has its multiplicative inverse that when multiplied to gives one. Just like we have in real numbers, when we have a number five and we want to find its multiplicative inverse, we say that that's one by five because five and its reciprocal one by five together when multiplied, give us one. That works the same in complex numbers as well. This one is called existence of multiplicative inverse. So these are the five laws for multiplication, very similar to addition. Now, if you combine addition and multiplication, you get one new law and that's this one. If you have three complex numbers in this form, we have Z1 multiplied by Z2 plus Z3. So we have a product here and we have addition here. We can say that this is equal to Z1, Z2 plus Z1, Z3. So you multiply first and second and add it to the product of first and third. This is very similar to A times B plus C, that's AB plus AC. And this is called distributive law of multiplication over addition. This works in the complex world, very similar to how it works in the real world. So. These are your laws for multiplication. Now, very quickly talking about laws of division, not a lot of them work for it. Even the closure law fails because there is a complex number zero plus zero i. If you put that in the denominator, everything breaks. So there is a complex number that you cannot divide with. So even closure law does not work for division. So this is an overview of algebra of complex numbers. We have covered addition, multiplication, subtraction and division. Now, before we wrap up, let's talk about this one, the multiplicative inverse. This involves some bit of calculation and it's usually asked to find multiplicative inverse of complex numbers. So let's practice this one before we go. 
Let's find the multiplicative inverse of 4 minus 3i. How do we do this? Multiplicative inverse is the reciprocal. That's 1 upon 4 minus 3i. But if you have to write this in its standard form, its real part and its imaginary part, we have to rationalize the denominator. How do we do that? Let's multiply it with 4 plus 3i by 4 plus 3i. So the numerator becomes 4 plus 3i and the denominator becomes a minus b times a plus b, that's a square minus b square. So that's 4 square 16 minus 3i square, that's 9 minus 9 because i square is minus 1. So a square minus b square, b square is minus 9. This gives us 4 plus 3i upon 16 plus 9, that's 25. So its real part is 4 by 25 and its imaginary part is 3 by 25. So this is the multiplicative inverse of 4 minus 3i. And if you have to generalize this, how do we find the multiplicative inverse of any complex number a plus ib? Pause the video, try this on your own. Okay, so let's do this together. This is 1 upon a plus bi. This is the multiplicative inverse. And now let's rationalize this. Let's multiply this with a minus bi by a minus bi. This is a minus bi by a square minus b square. That's a square minus ib square. That's i square b square and i square is minus 1 so minus minus is plus this is a square plus b square so this is your complex number that's multiplicative inverse of a plus bi so to get the multiplicative inverse of any complex number just replace a plus bi with a minus bi and divide it with a square plus b square all right